let's revisit this contingency table where we were looking at a survey of people to find out if they had their high school diploma or not and to figure out how much money they made, whether it was less than $40,000 or greater than $40,000. And we have a breakup of all of those people that were surveyed here. Now, all the probabilities that we've done so far have always involved this grand total here. We wanna find the probability based on our survey of someone making less than $40,000 a year. Well, I interviewed 200 people and 105 of those people made less than $40,000 a year right? Less than $40,000 a year. I include both the people with the high school diploma and without because it doesn't specify. And I can do 105 divided by 200 and get 0.525 or 52.5%. Again, make sure that you have both the unreduced fraction so I can see where you pulled the numbers from the contingency table as well as the percentage so you can check your answers as you're going through your homework. However, th these probabilities are great, but sometimes it's very helpful for us to look at a more focused subgroup when we're calculating our probabilities. Let's consider this example here. We want to find the probability of making less than 40,000 given that you have a high school diploma. Now this word given that says that we aren't interested in all 200 people anymore. What we're interested in is find, looking at the people that made less than $40,000 that had a high school diploma. So we have kind of an initial condition here. And what that does is it changes the bottom number of my probability fraction. In this case, I want to limit myself just to the group that has a high school diploma. Now, having a high school diploma is this top line. And so essentially what I can do here, once I've decided I, this is what I want to limit myself to, I am only going to be looking at this top row here when I calculate my probability. In this case, there were a total of 182 people that had a high school diploma. So that 182 becomes the bottom number in my probability fraction. All right, so out of these 182 people, or the 182 people that had a high school diploma, how many of those made less than 40,000? Well, there were 90 out of those 182 people that made less than 40,000. So we can do 90 divided by 182, and I get 0.494, or 0.495, I guess, if we round up, which would be 49.5%. So if you had a high school diploma, there's a 49.5% chance that you made less than $40,000, so about half and half. Now. Let's look, this is what we call a conditional probability. And a conditional probability means that we have a condition that we're limiting it to. We're not interested in the entire group, we're interested in a specific subset. And this changes the bottom or the denominator of my probability calculation fraction. So let's look at another example here so you can kind of see how useful this is. This time, let's find the probability of making less than $40,000 given that you have, you don't have a high school diploma. Make sure this is a different problem. All right, well this time my given that says I'm gonna be limiting to a smaller subgroup here. And I'm limiting my group to people that don't have a high school diploma. So the people that don't have a high school diploma becomes my bottom number in my probability calculation. Up here, if I'm looking at only the groups that don't have a high school diploma, there were a total of 18 people that I'm interested in. So now I'm just focusing on that smaller subgroup. Now from here, I'm interested in what's the probability of making less than 40K in this situation. Well, if we come up here, there were 15 people out of those 18 that made less than 40K. So I'm gonna use 15 as the top number of my fraction. So when I do my probability calculation, 15 divided by 18 gives me 0.833 or 83.3% chance. If I don't have a high school diploma, there's an 83.3% chance that I am gonna end up making less than 40K. If I had a high school diploma, I have a much smaller chance of making less than 40K. I'm probably gonna be making more money because of that diploma. 
So being able to look at these conditions here is really helpful for you to be able to really narrow things down, right? There was a 52.5% chance of making less than 40K overall, but there's a huge differentiation if we look at these smaller groups, if you have a high school diploma or not. That diploma does make a difference in your future income. So that's the concept behind a conditional probability. Let's try one more example here from our table. Let's suppose that we talk to a person that makes more than $40,000. What's the probability that they do not have a high school diploma? All right. Well, this time we don't have the word given that, but we do have this word if. This, again, is a key word to tell you that we want to limit ourselves to only a specific group. If I talk to a person that makes less that makes more than $40,000, I'm going to be talking to one of these 95 people. And this time I'm going to limit and focus my numbers only on this column because this is the group that I'm assuming is going on here. If this is the case, what's the probability? So the 95 here, this 95 total of people that makes more than 40K is now my bottom number in my probability calculation. Now, I'm talking to that person that makes 40K, so I'm only talking to one of these 95 people. What's the probability that they do not have a high school diploma? Well, there are only three people that do not have a high school diploma in this making more than 40K. So three becomes the top number of my probability. I can find now calculate the percentage probability by doing three divided by 95. It gives me 0 0.032 or 3.2%. So if I am only interested in people that make more than $40,000, there's only a 3%, just about 3.2% chance that that person doesn't have a high school diploma. There's a much better chance that they actually have a high school diploma when we look at that subgroup. So again, this is our idea of conditional probability. If there's no conditions, then we're just looking at the entire group. If there are conditions and words like given that or if or suppose that we talk to this type of a, a group, then we're going to limit ourselves either to a specific row or column on our contingency table, and we use that to make a new bottom number for my calculations.